Okay, in today's video, we are going to do not one, but two things. We're going to calculate first the net work that is done on that object by all of those forces. Then we are going to use the network to determine the change in velocity of the object. Don't switch the channel. Here we go. Okay, we want to figure out, as we said, the network. Now you should notice that there are four forces. 40 newtons to the right by the applied force, 35 newtons to the left by the friction force, and we have a normal force and a gravitational force. Now before we start, a couple things should come to you as you look at this diagram. First of all, you should notice the forces are unbalanced. 40 to the right, 35 to the left. Normal and gravitational forces are balanced, but in the x direction, the forces are unbalanced, the direction of motion. That means the net force is greater than zero. That means the net work is greater than, going to be greater than zero, and that means the object is experiencing acceleration. Now, as I said, we're going to start off by calculating the work done by each force, FD cosine theta, forces and distance, force times distance times the cosine of theta. It's important that you understand what theta is. Theta is the angle. Okay, Theta is the angle between the displacement and the force for each case. How does that work? Let's see. Okay, for the applied force, the applied force is 40 newtons. The distance is 15 meters. The angle between the force and the displacement is zero degrees. This is the displacement, this is the force, parallel lines pointing in the same direction, the angle between them is zero. The cosine of zero is one, and that means that that force, the applied force, does 600 joules of work, plus 600 joules of work, positive work, force in the direction of the displacement. Now, you should have in your head the cosine of 0 degrees, 90 degrees, 180, and 270, just like you should have the sine for those angles in your head also. You should remember the cosine of 0 degrees is plus 1. Yes, you could look it up. Yes, you could get it from your calculator, but that would be a good thing to have a picture of the cosine and the sine curve in your heads. Okay, that's the applied force. What about the gravitational force? Well, it's the force of gravity times the distance times the cosine of the angle between them. Well, you should notice that between the displacement and the gravitational force is 90 degrees. And as I said, you should have that in your head. The cosine of 90, as you now know, is zero. That means that the gravitational force does zero work. And we can apply the same thing to the normal force, because the normal force is at right angle to the displacement, and therefore the cosine the theta is 90, the cosine of 90 is zero, and the normal force does no work. I just want to point out that it's not that these forces don't exist, it's just that forces at right angles to displacement do no work on the object. Okay, the friction force, 35 newtons, 15 meters, the angle between the displacement, the direction of motion, and the friction force is 180 degrees. Okay, those lines are parallel to each other, but they're pointing in opposite directions, those vectors. The cosine of 180, as you know in, from having it in your head, is minus one, and that means that the friction force does minus work, 525 joules. Think of it as the applied force does positive work, it puts energy in. The normal, the, excuse me, the friction force acts opposite the motion, takes energy out and the net work done on the object, we add all those up, 75 joules. Okay, so there's 75 joules of work is the net work if we add all the forces, the work done by each force. Now, we couldn't notice a little bit uh, if we were asked just to get the net work. Now, in the previous example, we got the work done by each force. If we wanted just the net work, then all we really need is the net force because the net work is really the net force times the distance times the cosine of theta, the angle between the net force and the displacement. Now you should notice, as we said in the previous example, that these are at right angles. So the normal force and the gravitational force do no work on the object. So what is the net work? Well, the net work is simply 40 to the right, 35 to the left. We'll call this the positive direction. So it's five newtons pointing to the right. Okay, so we just plug that into our equation. The net force is five newtons. The object is moving 15 meters. The angle between the force, the net force, and the displacement is zero degrees. Again, that's plus one, and therefore we get the same answer of 75 joules. Okay, so in this case, 
We just figured out the network. We didn't figure out the work done by each force, but you'll notice you get the same answer. Now we can use the network to determine the change in velocity of the object. Now to determine the change in velocity of the object, we're gonna need the mass. So let's just say the mass of the object is 5.5 kilograms. We're going to use the work energy theorem. And we wanna know if the object starts at rest, what is the final velocity of the object? So it's starting at rest. The work energy theorem says that the net work done by the object is equal to the change in kinetic energy. Now you should remember kinetic energy is one half mv squared. So the net work is equal to one half mv squared. Now I put here mv final because it's really the final minus the initial. We said the initial velocity is zero. So we don't have to really put the initial velocity over here. All we have is one half mv final squared. So we wanna know what is the velocity. We're gonna solve for the velocity. That means the velocity is equal to the square root of two times the work divided by the mass. This is one half mv squared. Multiply both sides by two, you get two times the work divided by m. You get two times the work divided by m. Take the square root of both sides and you get the square root of two times the work divided by the mass. That means that the final velocity is equal to the square root of two times 75 joules divided by 5.5 kilograms. And that means the final velocity of the object after a network of 75 joules is applied to a 5 kilogram, 5.5 kilogram object over a distance, what was the distance? <clears throat> 15 meters, I believe, is going to be 5.25 meters per second. Okay? So how is that? Did you find that helpful? If you found that helpful, please give me a nice comment or a thumbs up in the comment section below. In that video, we calculated the network kind of two different ways. And then as an added bonus, we use the network and the work energy theorem to calculate the final velocity of the object. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found that helpful. And we will see you in the next video.